All right, today's tech video, we're going to take one of our 427 small block Fords, which is a very popular package, and we're going to show you the process that we go through to install basically the clutch, the flywheel, the bell housing, and the transmission, along with how to properly set up the free play for the hydraulic release bearing. First, what we're going to show you is we have basically a manual transmission worksheet. Same thing we have for uh, automatic transmissions. And uh, we use this as a guideline to go through so we don't miss any steps. And uh, we do provide this with the engine and transmission combination for the customer. So first we start with installing the pilot bearing, which you can see has already been done. Also cleaning the block surface area where our block plate is going to mate. So then what we want to do is just take our block plate and simply install it to make sure that it, it goes on the dowels real nice and easy. Now the other thing that we like to do and encourage is uh, with these laser cut plates, sometimes there is uh, deburring that needs to be done. So what we normally do is go ahead and check the starter pilot area into the actual block plate to make sure that it, it properly fits. So as you can see, it fits in there, no problem. All right, now that we got the flywheel installed, uh, we've loctited the bolts, we're gonna go ahead and torque it up. And uh, you can use a flywheel holding tool or make a, a, a tool similar to what we have over here. I don't know if you can see it, but uh, basically just goes off of alignment stud and locks into the, the starter teeth. So we're gonna torque this to 80 foot pounds. And we'll do it in a staggered pattern. Okay, so we're ready to install the clutch now. Uh, this particular package is going in a Cobra kit car, which is very, very common uh, for us. So what we use is a McLeod dual disc clutch. And uh, there's a couple little things when you're installing a dual disc clutch that you need to make sure uh, you pay attention to. Uh, number one, like anything, we always clean uh, the surfaces to make sure that they're free of any oils, any kind of lubricants. Uh, so both, the, both sides of the uh, clutch disc surfaces, as well as the flywheel, as well as the pressure plate. Uh, now, these discs are actually labeled bottom and uh, top and a flywheel side. So basically, this one here is our bottom disc, and it has labeled flywheel side. We're going to use our alignment tool here and just basically set that up. We'll install our adapter ring, and sometimes I'll point out that you do maybe need to deburr the uh, holes for your alignment dowel pins. Uh, sometimes they can be a little bit tight. Um, each application is going to be a little bit different. Once you have the adapter ring on, then we'll have six bolts. I've already applied some Loctite to. Now that we have the adapter ring uh, fasteners installed, we'll just go ahead and torque these. Like I said, it's 22 foot-pounds to 25 foot-pounds. Now basically we're ready to go ahead and install the second disc. As I mentioned before, that there's the flywheel side and it's labeled top disc. So we'll go ahead and install that. And now we can install our pressure plate. Now you see these white marks here. You definitely want to line these up when installing uh, basically your adapter ring as well as the, the pressure plate. Now they've got a nice washer, lock washer, and then a 12 point nut. All right, now that we've got basically all the nuts just started on this, we'll take our, our alignment tool and you know, we'll just wiggle it around and more or less make sure that this clutch, both discs are centered. And then what we'll do is just basically snug down just a little bit. And the reason for this, and this is the most crucial part, is you can imagine the tolerance of this plastic alignment tool is not nearly as good as a, a steel input shaft. So for those of you that are doing it yourself at home and you're doing an install with a dual disc clutch, um, use this just to get it halfway lined up. And then what we'll want to use is the transmission input shaft because it's a whole lot more precise. And we'll go ahead and slip it in, make sure that we are still lined up correctly. And you can tell that it slid all the way in. So now we know that the discs are aligned properly and it's going to allow, once the bell housing's on, the transmission to seat without having to draw it in with bolts. 
So what we'll do is we'll just snug up a few more of them just to ensure that this doesn't move. And then we'll slide the transmission back out, torque this up for good, and then we're ready to install our bell housing. Uh, now that we've drawn it up evenly all the way around, basically what we'll do now is torque it in two steps. The first step's 25 foot-pounds, and the second step's 35. And what we want to do is just a staggered pattern uh, on torquing it just to evenly load that pressure plate. All right, so now we're ready to install the bell housing. A few things, uh, we, we pretty much only provide the spun steel quick time bell housings with all of our builds. Uh, a few things as we want to point out, in some cases, because of how heavy the powder coat gets on these, uh, we do want to thread chase the holes. Uh, and the dowel pin holes, it's really kind of nice to just go in there with a cartridge roll and just clean it up and deburr it so it slips on nice and easy. The other thing that's going to come up, I'm sure, uh, with doing this installation is going to be uh, what's called a parallel and concentric alignment of the bell housing to make sure the transmission pilots correctly. We have done so many of these and checked and checked and checked that within a street application, basically these bell, housing, bell housings are within about two thousandths of run out. Uh, that is beyond fine for the street. Now, if you're going to be in a racing application, high RPM shifts, then it is probably a good idea to go ahead and clean this mating surface that meets up with the block plate, as well as this mating surface that meets up with the transmission. Uh, and then this way, that would give us a, a, a nice machine surface. Uh, these are actually surface ground bell housings. So the only misalignment or tolerance that's different is the, the amount of powder coat that is on these. So uh, just like to just point that out, we do have other videos also on uh, how to actually properly check and set up for parallel alignment as well as the concentric alignment. So now what we're gonna do, I'll put all these bolts in, we'll torque up the bell housing, and we'll move on to setting up our bearing free play and how to check those measurements. All right, now we're down to the measurement taking time. So we're going to go from the bell housing uh, surface here to the, the tallest edge of the pressure plate clutch finger. And uh, basically, if you just grab a straight edge, uh, there's a couple ways you can do this, but uh, more or less, you take that straight edge, and what we're going to do is basically just go up to the clutch finger and slowly slide it in. And we're going to account for the fact that our straight edge is 80 thousandths thick. So we come out with a 3780. Basically, we minus the 80 thousandths, it's 3700. And I've been marking our sheet here as I've went down with the torque specs and going through the procedure so that way we don't forget. At this point, we're going to basically take our second measurement is going to be on our release bearing to the mating surface on the transmission. And we have 3680. So basically we take away that 80 or 3600. That basically says that we have 100 thousandths of end play. And generally we want to be between 100 and 150. Um, one of the things I want to mention though, when you get an engine and transmission package from us at Prestige, we've done all this, we like to ask you to double check the measurements. But on the, uh, the other side of that, we didn't really show you because of course I had this pre-set up. This is a threaded collar. So of course we're going to thread this around until we can get our end play measurement where we want it. Once we, we get it where we want it, you'll notice that we just kind of stuff this, oh sorry it was this other one. We stuff this in there to try and hold that bearing about the location it's going to be once it's installed in the bell housing. There's a hole here that those lines are going to come out of. Now one of the things we do once we're finished, as we are now, we're going to pull both of those lines back and zip tie them to this, this uh, uh, ear clamp here. And the reason being is you should not have to basically do anything more than to clip that 
and put the wires, or sorry, the, the hoses through the bell housing and install the transmission. Be aware that if you clip that off, a friend may come by and turn this bearing on you, and before long, our end play is incorrect. So now that we're finished with this, one of the things I'd like to point out that is probably the most overlooked thing on a hydraulic uh, clutch system with internal release bearings. This release bearing gets blamed a lot of times for leakage and seals blowing out, but what it boils down to is something that's unchecked. And really what it is is in the car. Your, your clutch pedal travel is very important. Once the clutch is fully disengaged, if you still have travel in your pedal, you need to have an adjustable pedal stop to, to stop that pedal from traveling further. Uh, if this bearing is all the way at the end of its stroke and we still can push the pedal and push more fluid into this, there's nowhere for that fluid to go. Uh, and that's why these internal release bearings usually get blamed for an incorrect setup. So just be aware of that. It's all in the instructions. It's all provided with the engine and transmission package from us here at Prestige. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.